Hey, welcome to OH3SPN Finland. Now, I saw a, a mention on, on Facebook uh, asking about if anyone had used the SPX100 antenna and whether it was any good. It's one of these supplied by Moonraker. And I replied, yes, I've used it quite successfully. Um, some other people were saying it's a dummy load. I was agreeing that it's a dummy load on some bands. And I thought, why don't I just shoot a quick video of this working without any magic, just the antenna in the house, just to prove it can work. So I connected it all up, got the SWR matched and, you know, adjusted everything. And I tried calling CQ and nothing. I tried calling CQ again and nothing. And this happened for some time. It was only when I went to my main radio and I checked the condition of the bands that I realized that the reason no one could hear me using 5 watts from an FT817 and this antenna is because the bands were in a really, really bad state. And even on the ICOM 7300, I had to transmit, I think I managed it with about 20 watts to a full-size dipole in the garden. I was spotted on the reverse beacon, so... 5 watts to a compromise antenna in the house. It just wasn't working. Anyway, I've kept coming back and throughout the last couple of days I've been randomly calling CQ or test, test, test from OH3SPN. And I've just been spotted with a, a good signal report as well. So, I mean, I'll, I'll do the video in a minute, but uh, plus 12 dB signal to noise ratio. So that's really not bad. So it proves that the antenna works if the bands are, are willing. But the, the antenna, the SPX100, nine band antenna, um, I've got details in the video. I won't cover it too much here, but it's rated at 50 watts output. I would be hesitant to dump that much power into it. Um, I mean, I, I, as you can see on the video, I was using five watts on 30 meters with a counterpoise and I was getting a, a bit of a tickle of RF off the key. So 50 watts, I'd possibly be a little bit more hesitant unless you've got a, a really good network of, of counterpoises. Anyway, it works. It is a compromise antenna, but if you're using CW, if you're using, especially if you're using FT8 or JS8 call, you, could, you can make contacts with a, a rusty screwdriver shoved in the, the PL2 or the SO239 port. But um, it does work. I have had voice contacts as well. So check out the video and uh, yeah, enjoy. And I'll, I'll come back to the, the report afterwards. So it's very early in the day. I haven't even had my first coffee yet, but I've just got the 817 and just attached a, a counterpoise wire to the terminal, the ground terminal on the back. I don't know how long this is. I'm guessing... I've probably cut it for a quarter wave on, it looks too long for, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's a quarter wave on 20, I don't know, but the point is I'm just going to connect this up with the, the SPX, whatever it is, antenna, the supposed dummy load. I'll, I'll try it on a couple of bands, but I'll, I'll try my main antenna. I can't use on 30 meters and it's a band I do enjoy. So I might try, I think 30, 30 meters is the point where the antenna starts performing more like a dummy load and less like an antenna. Certainly if you get down to 40, I've had contacts on 40, but I wouldn't say it's particularly good for that. I, I think 20 meters upwards really. So I'm going to have my coffee. I'll then show you the antenna. And I don't have the sheet of paper that came with it and I can't, I've got no computer switched on at the moment. So I'll, I'll experiment with lengths until I get a good match and we'll take it from there. Let's see what happens. Time for coffee first. So here we have the, what is it? SPX 100. So I've got, this is basically the inductive part of it. It's just a huge coil of wire. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, it's a huge coil, coil of wire with taps at various points. So, I mean, it's, it's just a, a stick of loss, really, no matter how you <laughs> look at that. 
So the, the idea is you have this jumper wire so you can connect it to the, the different taps and, and take out elements of the inductance. So if you need all the inductance, you're probably looking at 80 or whatever the lowest frequency of operation is. And then as you get higher up to probably 30 meters or six meters, you just use the, that's the wrong way. I'm talking about it the wrong way. Yeah, if you short out all of that, you just have a, a small bit of inductance there. So I, I bought a, a right angled connector so that this can fit on the back of the radio. These these are not known to be particularly great quality, but this one seems to work okay. So that's the size to fit in the backpack. You have the additional element here, which just screws on, and that extends to a couple of meters or so. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite portable. It works. It's not the best antenna. It's not <laughs> the antenna with the most gain. Um, but yeah, it's, it's done me well in, in parks, on park benches, uh, the local club I used to, to visit. Um, I remember being out on the balcony and, and working a few stations on 20 meters SSB voice with reasonable reports. So yeah, it's it's not really... It's not one of the most efficient antennas, obviously, but it works and it will work on voice if conditions are helpful but don't expect it to work at the dip of the sunspot with voice on the lower frequency bands because you may as well just be transmitting into a dummy load. So let's assemble this and I'll be back shortly. So I now have the SPX100 walkabout, whatever you want to call it, antenna connected to the radio. The right angled connector is straight on the back. I've got the jumper connected between the, the first two points and the antenna is extended, what, 30 centimeters. Um, yeah, come on, this, this, there's not much metal in the air there. There's, that's mostly inductance. So do you see what I mean? On the, the lower bands, 30 meters and below, I mean, 30 meters is, is really, really marginal. <laughs> Look at that, it's ridiculous. Um, but the, the radio is connected up. I've got the key in. I've adjusted it. It's very, very fine tuning, as you can imagine. Because, again, there's no real length to the antenna. You adjust it a centimeter and the SWR is sky high. Uh, so I've, I've got the meter showing SWR. And that's... The radio is showing no reflected power. And if I... That's power modulation. Power, if I show the meter, that's power output on high power, I believe. Nope, that's high power. So that's five watts to a tiny bit of metal on the rear port. So I'm going to fire up the reverse beacon web page and then we'll see what we can do back shortly and maybe more coffee at the same time. So this is the reverse beacon network searching for my call OH3SPN. I'm in the middle of the, the CW band. I have a high noise level because this is right next to wireless router and a whole stack of other equipment in here but I've checked on my main radio with the external antenna and there's there's nothing currently on this frequency. So I'm not worried about going over the top of someone. So let's set this to Kia. It's a while since I've done this. So let's see what happens. I got the radio propped up with a bit of solder as as all amateurs should have. I have my key here ready to go. And I'm a bit rusty on the CW, but we'll see. I'll try sending test, test, DEOH3SPN. Uh, I'll repeat the call sign a couple of times and we'll see if we get, we get spotted on the reverse beacon network.
Interestingly, I've just noticed, even with the counterpoise, I'm getting tickled. I thought I was before. I'm just getting a tickle of RF off the key, which is, is not, not good. <laughs> not good at all. So I think it's fair to say that on 30 metres, although I've had this working before, uh, it's not very effective and half the RF via the key is is coming into my fingers so yeah not not the best test I'm afraid but let's try and go slightly higher in frequency to to where the antenna is probably a little bit more effective I'll just tune this up for 20 meters and I'll be right back so I'm back 20 meters the antenna is about 90 centimeters long which is a bit better I'm no longer getting shocks off the, the key, although I am getting static shocks just because it's the air is so dry. I've had a few big static zaps, which has been fun. But let's give this a, a go. Again, I've checked on the main antenna that there's no, no activity on this specific frequency at the moment. I'm on five watts. Uh, SWR is good. Change that to power output. There we go. Let's try. Oh yes, there we go. T4 FX with a, a 12 dB signal to noise ratio using just the, the antenna indoors with a, a counterpoise wire as you saw on the video. So really not too bad at all. And let's have a look at that. T F four X. The call sign is familiar, actually. I mean, they've only just spotted me. I didn't work them on, on CW. Uh, cool. Okay. Well, Iceland. Yeah, so Finland to Iceland, perhaps not a huge distance, but that's just an example of the antenna working. So if you're looking for something portable that you can use from a park and... I mean, I think I said in my original Facebook comment, if if you can throw up a wire and you have space to take a small ATU, either automatic or a small QRP tuner, you'll probably get a higher signal out with a, a random length of wire that is longer than, than the radiating element on this. So if you use the ATU to perform the, you know, the matching section, you'll probably get a, a few dBs gain over this antenna, but this is small, it's simple, it can disassemble to go in a backpack. I mean, again, a small ATU and a wire would, but if you're out in a park, there's not always space to, to sling a wire up in a tree or something. So this is a neat solution. It's worth having. I've had it for probably about seven years now, and it does get reasonably regular use during the summer when I'm out and about portable. My, my preference would always be to, to throw up a full-size dipole, but again, if you're in a public area, that always is not always possible. So, yeah, hope you've enjoyed that. I don't know if, if you have any comments, please do leave them. Always interesting to hear what, what other people think. Uh, but my main point is, it's not the most efficient antenna, but it's by no means a, a dummy load either. 73s for now. This is Steve, OH3SPN.